Greetings folks, this is the second instalment in my series of INAV troubleshooting videos. In the first video I looked at problems with arming and spinning the motor up. In this video I'll be looking at control surfaces or servos and reasons why they may not be moving or moving in the wrong direction, either from the sticks or from the stabilisation. Now the very first step we need to do is make sure the actual servo or control surface is working by itself. So for that I'm going to use a servo tester. I have a servo tester and a 5 volt battery there. And just to make sure the actual servo and the wiring do work properly. And also when it's installed on the plane, the wiring that goes from the servo all the way through to the flight control board, uh, check that that is actually working properly as well. Now the servos don't get power from the USB input so you do need to connect the flight battery to the board and it's a really good idea to have a, a separate servo for troubleshooting so that you can plug it in anywhere you want and it's a lot easier to do this outside the plane too so best to check all of this stuff before you mount it in the plane. If you suspect there's something wrong with the board then we need to measure the voltage on the PWM pins between the ground and the red pins or the power pins. That should be five volts. So let's just try that now. Very good idea to have a, a just a basic multimeter as well. And to measure the, the voltage on these pins, I'll use a servo extension there. So I don't short things out. And there we have 4.8 volts. That's uh, near enough. That tells us that the servo BEC is working properly. If you're getting zero volts or a lower voltage between the ground and the and the red pins on this PWM line, uh, then you're going to have to look at the bottom of the board to make sure there aren't any shorts or bent pins or things like that that are affecting the, the voltage on these pins. Also you need to make sure all your servos and wiring are, are not shorting out because if you plug in one bad servo or one shorted component into this lot here, you'll affect the voltage on all of these pins. On some boards there is a connector in between different levels of the boards and these pins in here can get bent or broken as well so make sure that they are all connecting properly. And for the rest of the troubleshooting let's go over to the configurator. The first thing we need to be aware of you must be using the correct firmware target for your board. This is the Speedy F405 wing but if you are using the F405 wing mini you might be tempted to use the mini target, but that is the wrong target. That's the quad board. Uh, the F405 wing mini uses the F405 wing firmware target. Similarly, with the Matek F405 wing, there is a F405 target there, but that's not the right one. We need to use the F405 SE target for the F405 wing from Matek, and you need to go to the product page to make sure you have exactly the right target your board. All right so we've got the correct firmware target let's connect the board and the first thing you can check is that the animation once you've mounted the board on your plane the animation is working in the correct direction the same direction as you're moving the plane if it's moving in a different direction then your stabilization is going to be off uh, and you'll crash your plane as soon as you swap out of manual mode so the animation must move in the same orientation as the board if it doesn't, you'll need to go to the alignment tool and tell INAV how you've mounted your board. You may have rotated it around 180 degrees to get better access to the connections or something like that. For instance, on the Adam RC Swordfish, uh, the board is upside down and back to front. So you have to make sure those changes are reflected in the alignment tool. have to have done your accelerometer calibration. And now we'll go to the mixer page. And if you follow the normal prompts as uh, you're setting up your board uh, that pop up on the screen here, you'll get something like this for a normal plane. You'll get the motor mixer line there and you'll get all the servo mixer lines here. Unless these servo mixer lines have something in them here, you won't get any action out of your servos. Uh, so these are elevator, aileron, aileron and, and uh, rudder on servos 1, 2, 3, 4. So you know that if you plug servos into S3, S4, S5 and S6, then they will be getting a signal. 
Next up in outputs, uh, you need to make sure enable motor and servo output is selected, otherwise your motor or your servos won't be getting any signals, so that has to be ticked for anything to work. In the ports page, you need to have your receiver set up on the appropriate UART, and your receiver has to be bound and working with your radio. And if we now go to the receiver page, uh, then watch these first four channel graphs and they must move to the right when you move the sticks on the radio up and to the right. If that doesn't happen, then you've got the wrong mix in your radio. You must use the INAV mix, not a wing mix or a V-tail mix or anything like that. In fact, I'll show you what happens when you use the wrong mix. Let's change to a flying wing mix. So now I'm using a flying wing mix and I'll put my sticks up and to the right and uh, we've got roll and yaw only going halfway and pitch and throttle going all the way. What about a... V-tail mix. So this is a V-tail mix and we've got all sorts of weird things happening there depending on how you set up your mix. For a flight control board you must use the INAV mix and nothing else. No matter what style of plane you're flying, flying wing, V-tail, whatever, quad, you must have the INAV mix, the basic INAV mix in your radio. And if you have it set up this way the stabilization will always work in the correct direction. And to check for correct stabilization direction, we need to put it into angle mode and lift a wing and the control surface should come up to counteract that action. And same on the tail, if you lift the tail up, the elevator should come up to counteract that pitch. Now if you find that one of your control surfaces is working in the wrong direction, say the elevator is reversed when you're wiggling the elevator stick, you can reverse the direction here by reversing the weight from plus 100 to minus 100 and that just depends on which way you have your servos mounted so uh, you may well have to do this and if you have something like a flying wing where you might have mixed inputs into uh, an individual servo like an Elevon mix like this then you have uh, a bit of roll and a bit of pitch going into say servo 1 say your roll action was reversed on servo 1 you can just reverse the direction in the same way by uh, putting a negative or changing a negative to a positive in the weight section here. You can also change directions uh, or reverse a servo in the outputs page but uh, you can only do that for conventional planes that have a single input for each servo. So quick recap we need to have the correct target for the board, we need to have the INAV mix in the radio, if the control surfaces aren't working at all we need to look for shorted out pins or broken pins or something on the flight control board or uh, broken cables, shorted out cables, something like that. If the control surfaces are working in the wrong direction when, then we go to the mixer page and reverse the weight and hopefully that covers all the problems you can have getting your servos to operate in the correct direction or operate at all using a flight control board with INAV. Don't forget to look in the video description. I'll put a link to the arming and motor troubleshooting video. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.